good evening welcome to alpha tech series number 22 in this video i am going to explain you about vibriosis what is vibriosis what are the different types of diseases that are caused by vibrio bacteria and how to control it before going to the presentation a brief introduction about me my name is ravi kumar amirneni I am an aquatic animal health specialist, partner in Alpha Biologicals, founder of Ravi Aqua Academy. I am on my mission to train 10,000 aquapreneurs and sales force to make shrimp farming simple, sustainable, and profitable. So let us dive into the topic. Let me share my screen. Okay, so what is vibriosis? All the diseases that are caused by vibrio species is called as vibriosis. So vibrio is the natural flora of the shrimp. For example, if you take seed or if you get seed from a shrimp hatchery, so if you are stocking seed means you are stocking vibrio along with it. And in most of the cases, Vibrio is the opportunistic pathogen. Whenever the shrimp is stressed or weak because of any reason, these, will, these Vibrio bacteria will proliferate and cause Vibriosis. So different types of Vibriosis are there. Systemic Vibriosis, enteric or oral infections. For example, some Vibrio species, they affect hepatopancreas, they affect midgut, and some species they affect uh, uh, stomach of the shrimp. So enteric or oral region infections. And some cases it is focal appendage necrosis and some wound infections and shell diseases like black spot. So different diseases that are caused by Vibrio, all these diseases are called uh, together called as Vibriosis. For example, systemic Vibriosis or Seagull syndrome Luminescent Vibriosis, most, most common in shrimp hatcheries. Uh, very rare occasions, you can also find this in shrimp farming. Septic Hepatopancreatic Necrosis, solin hindgut Syndrome, and this is uh, common in Monodon, uh, especially tiger shrimp. Appendage Necrosis or uh, rod disease, for example, tail rot, antenna cut, antennal scale rot, etc. Splinters, I'll show you the picture of your splinter. And EMS and AHPND, early mortality syndrome, are acute hepatopancreatic necrotic disease. White feces and running mortality syndrome. In these two cases, we don't know the exact etiology. We don't know the exact causative agent. But in almost all the cases, Vibrio was identified as one of the reasons. So that's why we cover this, uh, these two diseases also in this presentation. What happens if a pathogen or bacteria or antigen enters into the body? In case of humans or higher animals, there is antibody production, but in case of shrimp, there is no antibody production. What happens? How, how they protect themselves? So shrimp has hemocytes, granulocytes, semigranulocytes, and hyalinocytes. And first they have phagocytosis, then nodule formation, then granuloma formation. You can clearly see in this picture a granuloma formation. So all these hemocytes surrounding the, the Vibrio bacteria and wall it off. In some cases, Vibrio win the game and some cases shrimp win the game. So if Vibrio dominates, they get diseases. They get disease. If shrimp is able to counter the bacteria, uh, they'll be healthy, they'll recover. So this is a picture of uh, shrimp with systemic Vibriosis and uh, shrimp turns, body turns uh, bright red in color. And if you draw the hemolymph, hemolymph clotting time will be delayed. Normal shrimp, hemolymph will clot within one minute. In systemic vibriosis, hemolymph clotting will be delayed. On the other hand, most of the shrimps, 
hemolymph is sterile, there won't be any vibrio. But in case of systemic vibriosis, if you plate it, you get vibrio colonies on the TCBS agar. So this is a picture of SHPN, septic hepatopancreatic necrotis, necrosis. In this case, hepatopancreas becomes very small. We call it as technically atrophied. Uh, then it turns to loose shell. In some cases, because of delayed molting, you can also find gill falling. So in this picture, you can clearly see a shrimp with SHPND, hepatopancreas is atrophied, uh, it has become very small and white in color. And this is a common uh, bacterial shell disease. Technically, we call it as uh, melanized cuticular lesions or black spots. You can clearly see this. Most of the bacteria, Vibrio bacteria, they are chitinoclastic. They produce enzymes that uh, digest chitin. And this is the splinter. You can see a black band in the abdomen, abdominal muscle. So initially they thought something else, but later they found it is due to vibriosis. And AHPND, EMS or AHPND. Fortunately, we don't have this uh, disease in India, but the identification is atrophy of the hepatopancreas. Hepatopancreas size becomes very small. On the lower, this is the healthy one. On the top, you can clearly see there is a hepatopancreas atrophy in both these cases. And white fecal syndrome. You can see the white feces, white uh, mucus-like substance in the midgut of the shrimp. So we don't know the exact reason for this, but Vibrio is associated with this. So most of the farmers are able to control or manage white feces by controlling Vibrio infection. So running mortality syndrome. So there are different stages in this. In the first stage, antenna turns red. In the second stage, uh, uropods. You can see here, uropod turns red. And in the third stage, hepatopancreas turns uh, yellowish, reddish yellow, especially cephalothorax and the hepatopancreas becomes reddish yellow. And anorexia, and finally, you can see mortality. So this is a shrimp. Uh, on the top, it is healthy shrimp. And on the bottom, this is a shrimp with uh, uh, in the fourth stage of running mortality. After this, you can find mortality. In some cases of running mortality, you find white muscle. That is why most of the farmers think that it is mineral deficiency and they apply, they applied a huge, uh, still they're applying huge quantity of minerals. And if you do sampling, you can find all the four stages of uh, running mortality. This is the healthy one stage one, stage two, and stage three. After that, they will, uh, after st uh, stage four, they'll die. You can see this is the stage, stage four, becomes dark red in color. After stage four, the mortality starts. And uh, do, in the sampling, you get uh, different stages. For example, this is just dead, and this is uh, maybe a few minutes back. This is one day old, and this is two days old. That is the mortality is continuous. And you can see the uh, dead shrimps in the check tray. So every day when you lift check tray, you get uh, all these dead shrimps. And uh, if you continue with the running mortality, your survival goes down approximately 0.5% a day in the initial stages. And uh, as the disease progresses, the mortality increases. Uh, in most of the cases, if you want to harvest the shrimp at uh, 100 count, you may get 100% survival. With running mortality, you get, uh, suppose if you want to continue with running mortality, if you want to get 60 count, your survival will be approximately 60%. And if you want to continue till 40 count, you can expect a 40% survival with running mortality. So how to manage Vibrio? We know that Vibrio is the natural flora. We cannot avoid it. So what we have to do is we have to manage Vibrio by managing microbial uh, population in the pond or in the shrimp gut. So first thing is you have to check the seed for the Vibrio and select the one which is having less Vibrio uh, in the uh, body. 
and then uh, we should know about the fade for vibrio the normal fade for vibrio is molting shell molting shell is a very good uh, food for the shrimp then uneaten feed and fecal matter is also very good food for the shrimp so by removing these three things molting shells uneaten uneaten feed and fecal matter by using central drain it helps a lot and certain conditions they are favorable for vibrio for example high temperature high organic load blue green algae high ph high salinity and stress to stream all these all these conditions are favorable favorable for vibrio multiplication and if there is a stress shrimp immunity goes down if the immunity goes down it is highly susceptible for infections and uh, prevention and control methods so as i told earlier you have to select a very good quality seed then uh, blue green algae is uh, uh, is favorable for vibrio so you have to manage blue green algae you have to take care uh, blue green algae count will be rel either absent or relatively less in the pond and ph should not be high lower the ph better and you have to use probiotics i'll explain you uh, how to use probiotics and all in the next video and uh, of late most of the farmers they are using phase biotics in the next slide i am going to explain you how phase biotics work and organic acids if you use organic acids in the feed the uh, the ph of the gut uh, comes down so that vibrio is uh, vibrio cannot uh, multiply in the gut and some feed companies they came up with uh, functional feeds they are adding all these organic acids and uh, bioactive compounds in the feed itself and some some people are using immunostimulants immunostimulants like beta glucan and peptidoglycan they are proven uh, for their efficiency to induce immunity to boost immunity and there are certain herbal formulations that can uh, control vibrio also uh, are available in the market and this is a design of your central drain by using this central drain every day you can send out all the dead shrimp sludge fecal matter excess feed and molting shells so that the organic load in the pond will be relatively less so the so that the bacterial population will be vibrio bacterial population will be relatively less so coming to the probiotics so most of the farmers they ask us so what is the level of vibrio that is acceptable in the pond water and uh, we say it should be less than some cases we say it is uh, should be less than 100 it should be less than 50 some cases we say it is less than 30 but it is not correct the exact answer is if the total bacteria total plate count to vibrio ratio is 10 or more than 10 is to 1 your system is safe on the other hand if the ratio is less you are at risk even though if your bacterial count is high if your total bacteria to vibrio ratio is more than 10 your system is safe so that is the right answer and this is this slide explains how phase biotics work so these phase biotics they attach on the vibrio species they send their dna inside the vibrio so another new viral particles will synthesize in this uh, in the vibrio uh, uh, cell itself and then uh, after the rupture of this cell wall new uh, variants or new uh, phase by phages will come out of the body and these new phages they will uh, attach to the other vibrio species and they kill that vibrio they are very specific and soon uh, we are going to have a meeting or we are going to have a video um, by dr shubhashni uh, who is uh, she is a scientist uh, uh, she has produced she is producing phase biotics in india she did a lot of research on that so she is joining us soon with us and this is the uh, commercial product available in the market elixir already most of the farmers are using it 
And in conclusion, if you have your frequent uh, Vibrio outbreaks in your farm, you better reduce your stocking density. Focus on reduction of organic load. Uh, as I told you earlier, water exchange, sludge management. Uh, with water exchange and sludge management, you can control organic load. And strict feed management. If you are overfeeding it, you are going to get either uh, white feces or running mortality as early as possible. So focus on uh, feed management and uh, try to use bacteriophages, especially uh, between 30 to 50 days uh, during that time, shrimp is more sensitive. And use probiotics to maintain the ratio of total plate count and uh, Vibrio ratio more than 10 is to 1. So that's all for now. If you found this useful, please share it with your friends and uh, comment in the uh, uh, comment below what is your uh, takeaway from this video. So thank you very much. If you have any doubts, you can WhatsApp me on my WhatsApp number. This is 9848666776. Or also you can join in our Facebook group, Ravi Aqua Academy Hub. Uh, there are around 20,000 people are there in this group. So we welcome you to the group. Thank you very much once again.